All right. So, like I said, I just want to start off with kind of with like this PowerPoint and just really you're answering the questions of your sleep experience. That's it. So I think it's something important to talk about, especially since we know that sleep's very, very important. So how many hours do you usually get a night? So they just look over. What do we think? What do we think? How many do we get a night usually? Raven, how many hours do you get? Six and five. Okay, that's pretty good. It's not bad. Not bad. What about you, Hadley? Seven. So you get a good night's sleep then. Yeah, nice. What about you, Katie? Five to six. All right. All right. Allison? Five or less. What? This week. Boy, you have a lot of work. Oh, uh, so you're up late doing homework. Oh, man. All right. Okay. Is it wearing you down? Oh, gosh. Christian? Six or seven? Well, that's not too bad either. Okay. Noah? Five or less? What are you doing? Playing video games? Sometimes. What are you playing? Fortnite? Oh, okay. Right. Brittany, how about you? Five to six? Oh, wait, not bad, not bad. Andrew? Six to seven. Six to seven. Oh, that's pretty good. I'm between uh, like seven or eight. I usually hit the hit the hay pretty early, eight thirty or nine. Try to try to sleep as much as I can on the weekends. Try to get a little bit more sleep. What about on the weekends, or even you get a little bit more sleep on the weekends. What's that? Twelve hours. Oh my gosh, keepers. All right, all right. So in all your classes, this term. How often have you fallen asleep during class, Raven? What do you think? Not this year. Ask me any other year. I'd say every, almost every day. Really? Oh, okay. Well, you leave half the day, don't you? Okay. Allie? Never. Never fall asleep. That's good. All right. What about you, Katie? Never. Allison? You did? Oh, yeah. my gosh. Well, I finished all my work. But... Yeah, you're just nodding off then. Well, hey, then you don't have to stay up so late. <laughs> Christian? You're snoozing in study hall, huh? Is that with Miss Denlinger? Yeah. yeah. All right. No, how about you? A couple times. Ever in here? A couple times. Yeah. Brittany, how about you? Not at all. Not at all. Never. Uh, Andrew? I was going to say, you're always awake at heart. Yeah. All right. So, have you ever fallen asleep while driving? Raven? Like, while I am behind the wheel. Uh, yeah. No. Do you ever just drive, though? And you're like, you're, you're like, let's say, at your destination. Like, oh, I forgot how I got here. I don't even remember passing this or passing that. Is that all the time? It's kind of days out, huh? All the same scenery. Yeah, that's true. That happens a lot to me. Yeah. Or listen to like a podcast or something. Like, oh, wait a minute. Holy cow. What about you, Hallie? Never. All right. Katie? All right. Allison? Good. I do like things very long <laughs> what? Very long blinks. So you just rest your eyes when you're driving. <laughs> My gosh. I'm going to make sure I steer clear of you down on the road. What about you, Christian? Never. All right. Noah? Not even when you hit that deer. All right. You're wide awake for that one. Yeah. Brittany, how about you? Yeah. What's that? Once. You did fall asleep once. Yeah. When I got hit by a truck. Oh, my gosh. I was asleep. Knocked oh, unconscious. Oh, my gosh. Boy. I'm glad you're okay. Oh, gosh. What about you, Andrew? Never. 
31 percent of drivers have fallen asleep at the wheel at least once in their lifetime it's a pretty high number don't you think i think i mean oh twice a week you, you travel four distance oh really oh no nice. <laughs> what do you go down there for once a week Oh, cool. Nice. All right. So this was pretty much if you responded A, B, or C to previous questions, you probably have sleep debt, which a lot of people do. In our society, it's common. All right. So sleep deprivation again. So A, strongly agree. B, agree. Neither agree or disagree. Disagree. Or E, strongly disagree. Number one, I need an alarm clock in order to wake up at an appropriate time. Do we all need an alarm clock in here? I say strongly agree to that one. Do you? Yeah. How? Just do. Your circadian rhythms, huh? Okay. Yeah. There we go. Here we go. Yeah, let's get moving, huh? I uh, I have like a, a new alarm clock that I never have to set, really. It's my dog and my cat. Every morning, 5 a.m., to get fed batting at the door crying it's like you gotta be joking even on the weekends it's worse it's like 4 30 on the weekends so i don't really have to set an alarm anymore those two are pretty consistent all right it's a struggle for me to get out of bed in the morning raven I can say it agree. not strongly you just agree sometimes i can get out of bed very easily but especially during the winter yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot harder, huh? Okay, all right. Allie, what about you? Yeah, the struggle for you to get out of bed. Is it just because you're you're anxious about the school day, or is it just because you're tired? How many times do you hit the snooze? Oh, you don't. Oh, I hit the snooze a couple times actually. Eight? Oh my god. Because I don't have a snooze button, I just have a dismiss button. So I guess you could say I can sometimes hit the snooze button like seven times. <laughs> just have eight different alarms. What are they like five minutes apart? They are. Five minutes, okay. What about you, Katie? Yeah, strongly agree. Oh, that's tough. What about you, Allison? Strongly agree. Yeah. Christian? Just agree. Depends on the day. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Whenever I hit the snooze button, it's always harder for me to wake. It's harder for me to get going after I hit the snooze. If I just get up right away, I'm good to go. But after I hit that snooze, alarm, that snooze button, I tend to hit it even more. What about you, Brittany? You're up and at them, huh? You already say you you wake up before your alarm, huh? Yeah, you're good to go. Andrew? I agree. Yeah. I think it's weird. Like a Monday or Tuesday, I'm always really, it's always tough for me to get out of bed. But once it hits like Thursday or Friday, I'm a little more excited, I guess, the weekend. So I just get up out of bed, no problem. It's weird. What's that? Oh, you're the other way. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I guess me knowing it's a Friday, I'm like, oh, let's get this day over with so we can uh, start the weekend here, huh? I don't know. Three, on weekday mornings, I hit the snooze button several times to get more sleep before getting out of bed. We already kind of talked about that one. I feel tired, irritable, and stressed out during the week. Raven? Yes. Do you? Um, what? <laughs> there's no, there's no CD or you guys just pay yeah. What about Sundays? Do you get the Sunday blues? You don't? Oh, right. What about you, Hadley? B? Okay. Agree. Katie? Strongly agree. Oh, boy. What about you, Allison? Hey, oh, man. Christian? Hey. No? D? Oh, I was going to say. What about you, Brittany?
Sorry. Yeah, I got you. What about you, Andrew? I'm gonna go with C. C. Okay, you're just kind of going with the flow. All right, Andrew. Oh my god! <laughs> That's how my girlfriend is before she has coffee. It's like oh, I'm not gonna talk to you until you have it. Once she has that first sip, oh, good to go. All right, not bad. I have concentrate. I have trouble concentrating and remember. Raven, uh, disagree. disagree. All right. What about you, Hallie? C. Okay. Katie. C. What about you, Allison? C. Yeah. Christian. C. No. B and C. All right. Okay. Got a lot on your mind, I guess, huh? <laughs> Brittany? C. Andrew? I'm going Yeah. Everybody's around the same time there. Right? <clears throat> All right. I feel slow with critical thinking, problem solving, and being creative. What do you think, Raven? Three very different things. <laughs> C and me. All right. What about you, Hallie? C or D? C or D, Allison? D? Okay. So you're bang, bang, bang. Good, good to go. <laughs> A rabbit? Oh, my gosh. I always used to hate like the, the gerbils and when they're running in the wheel, the squeaking noise and when they're biting their water. The water bottle is so annoying, yeah. Ugh. I never had a rabbit, but I can only imagine. No, I do want one. I don't want one. Christian? See? Okay. No? Disagree. All right. All right. So, okay. Pretty? D? All right. I often fall asleep while watching TV. Raven? Disagree. So you can just turn it off, go to bed, no problem. You can watch whatever you're watching. No, it says I often fall asleep. I think it's being on. You're awake, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, so when you're, let's say at night, you don't fall asleep, you ever pass out while you're watching a movie or a show? No. no. I always fall asleep. Yeah, I got you. So you're easily awakened then by the, well, you never fall asleep for it, so you wouldn't know. I always pass out. I don't know what it is. I guess it's just getting older. 8.30, I'm just sitting there watching a movie or sports and not off. Oh, geez. What about you, Hallie? B? Yeah, okay. All right. I hate that. Last night, I was trying to watch The Mandalorian. I just couldn't stay awake. Or not The Mandalorian, Bob Fett, Bob Fett, whatever. Couldn't stay awake for it. Katie? C? All right. What about you, uh, Allison? A and B. Oh, wow. So you're passing out all the time when you're watching shows. <laughs> so that's your time to relax and you're just out. I really fell asleep last watching TV. Yeah. A lot of people need the TV on to fall asleep. Right? That's not me, but I mean, I can fall asleep watching it. Oh, yeah? What changed? Um, I don't know. Just happened. All right. Christian? Disagree. Okay. All right. But well, you know. Agree? Okay. Brittany? Neither. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Well, so if you're exhausted, right? All right. I often fall asleep in boring meetings or lectures or in warm rooms. Oh, Raven. Strongly agree. Strongly agree. You said you never fall asleep, though, in class. Well, this year, you said. This, yeah, this year. I said any other year, all the time. All the time. Out like Even a light. Math class, I fall oh, man. Yeah.
Yeah. What about you, Hallie? Just there. Never. Yeah, I disagree. Disagree. Yeah, kind of days off though. You're like, eh, I'm not paying attention, not listening really. Katie, B, okay. Allison, yeah. strongly agree. Oh my. <laughs> Christian, eh? Yeah, I see you dozing off here every now and then. No. C, okay. Pretty. Not all the time. Andrew? I'm going to go B. B. So you do agree to it, huh? I often fall asleep after heavy meals or after a low dose of... Whoa. whoa <laughs> I sleep Let's just bed. say with a big plate of food. What do we think? I sleep <laughs> after you eat dinner, big heavy meal. Let's say you get McDonald's or something, Big Mac. I don't know. Oh, okay. oh, I'm always out. Yeah. 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 I always fall asleep after Thanksgiving meal. Usually watch some football, pass out, wake up at halftime. Oh, good to go. All right. Brittany? B? Yeah. All right. I have to fall asleep while relaxing after dinner. Kind of goes along the same lines here. What do you think? Right? Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Hadley? Disagree? What about you, Allison? Um, <laughs> Before dinner. Yeah, if, if you said, like, I often fall asleep after. Yeah, like, you said, like, after you get home from school all the time. So you, do, you guys take some naps then, huh? Uh, okay. Oh, so you're out for like three. What'd you do then? Just sat around? <laughs> Did my homework. Did your homework. Okay. 3 a.m. Oh my gosh. Jeez. Katie, how about you? Disagree. Christian? Disagree. All right. Well, we're going to finish up after this one because I got to get through some information here. I often fall asleep within five minutes of getting into bed. You fall asleep right away? Never? Huh? Me. I pass out right away. I'm out like a light. So wrong with me. I don't know. I'm always out like a light. Right when I hit the bed, I'm done. I'm done for. Stick a fork in it. I go to bed at like midnight. Don't fall Oh my god, what do you do? Just scroll on your phone or what? No, I'm staring at the ceiling. What's that? Like oh, you're just thinking about your day, huh? Yeah, it happens all. All right, yeah, I'm out like a light. I, I'm really fortunate for that. I mean, there's no loss of sleep for me. I'm always, I have no trouble sleeping. I was like seeing those memes. Like if something's supposed to have you anxious, me thinking about the test in the morning and as people wake up, you know, always awake, just thinking about it. And I just have some person passed out. That's me. No problems. All right, bell ringer for today. <clears throat> Describe the different stages of sleep. Within your response, explain NREM, REM sleep. What ways occur during each stage? So beta, alpha, delta. What are the details of each stage? So what are some descriptions? Maybe... NREM1 is that first stage. How long does it last? Um, is there a dream state? Where do we usually have this dream state? You name it. Finalist theories of why we sleep. There you go. So this is a little bit of a longer one. Give you some time to work on this.
All right, so what do we got here? So let's say, what does NREM mean? What does that mean? NREM. What does that mean? Go ahead, Katie. Non-rapid eye movement. Good job. And stage one of NREM, describe that a little bit. Go ahead, Katie. Yeah, good job. So this is like the first five, 10 minutes of uh, when you first fall asleep. Uh, you could easily be awakened. I think yesterday I gave the example of that hidden power that all dads have when you try to change the channel on them. It's like, oh, I was watching that. Well, you're easily awake. You kind of understand what's going on around you. You hear conversations and it's like you understand it, right? You can, you're, you're consciously awake. And a lot of people say that, oh, this is me just resting my eyes. And anyway, that's the first stage. You're easily awakened. You're still somewhat have a conscious alertness to you as you can understand conversations around you. You're easily awakened. And uh, what about the waves? What about that? Is it alpha, beta, delta? What's in stage one here? So you're awake, you're alert somewhat. What is this? <clears throat> Go ahead, Allison. Beta waves, yep, good job, good job. So there's a higher frequency as you are still somewhat awake and alert. Good, good. And then the amplitude of these waves are fairly low. Awesome. What about stage two? So as we're getting into a deeper sleep, what was the term yesterday? I think I had for vocab that explains the stage as we're getting into more of a deeper sleep. So this is more of a higher amplitude of the waves that occur. What's that called? A sleep what? Spindles, right? You guys good with that? Sleep spindles. So sleep spindles occur during stage two as we're entering a little bit more of a deeper sleep. And again, we're not as awake or alert as we are at stage one. So it's a little bit more of a deeper sleep. And uh, this might last for 20, 30 minutes. And like I said yesterday, you go through these stages constantly throughout the night. It's not like you stay in stage one for a short period of time at, or for a longer period of time. And then you go to stage two, you go to stage three. Now this occurs rapidly throughout the night, depending on your sleep patterns, depending on, let's say your environment, what's around you, what kind of stress you might have, anxiety. Uh, you kind of fluctuate through these stages throughout your, your, your sleep. And stage three, is, stage three is more of a deeper sleep where Della waves occur. And as we're becoming more relaxed, and again, a lot harder to wake up through this sleep, our whole body is almost paralyzed in a way. We still have some brain function, of course we do, right? And, and we first have dreams occurring in this delta sleep stage three. Not as much as what we have in REM sleep, rapid eye movement, but for the most part, we're becoming more relaxed. We're becoming more comfortable in our sleep. And it's a lot harder for you to wake up during this stage. <clears throat> and then finally, REM sleep, rapid eye movement. And this is where the dream state occurs. Right? This is where the most of the brain activity is occurring during your stage of sleep. And because we dream, right? And we'll talk about dreams today, why we dream, and uh, maybe the storyline of dreams, theories of why we dream uh, more today. 
And REM stage, that's really all I want you to know about REM rapid eye movement is that is the dream state. All right, so real quick, your terms for today. You guys can just jot these down. I need to get through the material today. So I'll let you guys jot these down. You can define them on your own then um, as I'm going through the lesson. I want to assign tonight to the sleep disorders. So you can read a little bit more about that on your own. All right, you guys have those down? Okay. All right, so stages of sleep. <clears throat> These are the stages, like I was saying, it's not like you just stay in one stage for you know, the long uh, extended period of time when you're sleeping. You go through these stages constantly throughout your, your sleep, okay? Constantly, let's say throughout the night, or even if you're taking a long nap, like Allison does, right? So yeah. you might go through these stages constantly throughout the night. And young adults experience stage three a little bit more. So delta waves, a little bit more of a deeper sleep where our body becomes more, I guess to say, restless, right? Where we're not experiencing, uh, where we're experiencing more of a deeper sleep. And that's obviously very beneficial. For older adults, we don't really reach that stage three too often, okay? We don't reach that deep sleep often. And uh, there's a lot of grass, there's a lot of base research, research that shows the older to get, the less sleep you really achieve, the less REM sleep, the, rest, uh, the less deep sleep you uh, receive during a night's sleep. At a younger age, especially infancy, toddlers, babies are constantly sleeping. They go through that uh, REM sleep more often or they're dreaming or they're going through the dream state and they're reaching stage three a little bit more. As you get older, you don't see that often too much. That's why adults, I think it's funny, uh, those dads out there, I was up at 4 a.m. Cool, man. You want an award or something? I'm sure we all have some of that we can relate to. On uh, Christmas, I thought it was funny. I was in a group chat with my, uh, my girlfriend's dad and uh, their uncles. And the one uncle was complaining. He goes, I was up at 630. The kids had me up there on Christmas to open the presents. This stinks. And uh, he always says it in military time. He was like, oh, I was up at 0600. And uh, my girlfriend's dad, he always tries to wake up before everybody. It's so weird. He goes, I was up at 0400. Have a great day. <laughs> All right, cool. I guess we'll just give you a pat on the back. 
But as you get older, the less stages, well, less of uh, stage three, you do actually get to this deep sleep and even REM sleep where you dream. That's why adults really don't, uh, really don't remember their dreams too much. What about our dream journals? Anybody have any written down or jotted down yet? You don't remember them? No, I was just going to stupid paper. I don't remember any. Oh, stupid paper. Come yeah. on now. Oh, all right. So this is just more of a graph about REM sleep and how important it is. And this is already, already what I already talked about, how REM sleep, this dream state, we don't really see too often as we grow old, as we're getting into more of an adulthood and old age. And adults really don't receive that type of REM sleep where they dream. At infancy, though, toddlers, baby, childhood, adolescence, you receive REM sleep a little bit more and more of stage three, a deeper delta sleep. All right, sleep deprivation. We already talked about this. Um, ideally, eight hours of sleep is what you want to achieve. It's very difficult to do, especially in our society. And things change so much through uh, socialization, through innovation, and uh, this industrial state. Really, in the 1900s, 1800s, as industrialization was taking hold, many people didn't receive the proper amounts of sleep that they need. And it just goes to show how our society is changing more to a more modern industrial uh, state as job uh, status, anxiety. Let's just say uh, uh, the burden of our job status, maybe depression takes hold. And sociology explains that a lot. So if you're taking that next semester, uh, it kind of explains how our society changed to a point where it might be affecting our minds, might be affecting the way we uh, react and might actually be the reason for a lot of these psychological uh, issues that we might face because lack of sleep. All right, so effects of sleep loss. So fatigue, impaired concentration, increased irritability, depressed immune system, uh, greater vulnerability to accidents, weight gain due to hormone imbalance. So that's kind of why I went through that with you guys earlier to start a class, just to see how many hours of sleep you get and what effects might actually occur from that. And a lot of you said already just about how, um, you know, how anxious you might get, nervous you might get about your school day, okay? Or maybe a job that you might have. And a lot of you talked a little bit about how this might affect uh, really just your concentration. Maybe you're falling asleep in class. Maybe you're falling asleep um, you know, taking naps at, at the end of uh, at the end of your school day, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. It's a good thing. You should take naps, but for the most part, it just goes to show that we might have a lack of sleep at night, that we're not reaching the proper stages of sleep that we should. All right, one big effect I thought was interesting was really the uh, time change, okay, and how accidents occur more when we are going through that time change. So in the fall, we're gaining an hour of sleep, and that results in less accidents on the road. And there's a lot of research backing that. Springtime, we lose that hour of sleep. And that just goes to show that we might actually be uh, more, oh, vice versa, sorry. Yeah, thanks, Raven. Yeah, so we actually might be more susceptible to accidents on the road just because we are losing that hour of sleep, which I think is interesting to think about. And it's kind of common knowledge, right? We're not as uh, aware we're not as um, focused as what we should be without the proper amount of sleep. And a lot of people criticize, it. well, why are we taking an hour? Why are we doing that? I think it sucks this time of year, especially when you wake up in the morning, it's dark out. And I get home usually around, usually around 6.30 or so from wrestling practice. And I'm like, it's dark out. I never see really the light of day. It kind of stinks. Only in certain hair of the light, the shades on. All right, so daylight saving times definitely has an effect. All right, so dreaming, real quick, I want you guys to know manifest content and latent content. And this is Freud's beliefs of why we dream, the storyline, okay, and the meaning behind dreams. So manifest content is the dream storyline, right, and how this maybe plays an effect of our daily uh, routines and uh, maybe the experiences we have throughout our day. So when we're thinking about it with action synthesis theory, of our dream, how did this flow? How did this all occur? And what were the steps in the process of the dream that maybe resulted in the end, let's say the climax of our dream? Latent content is the supposed symbolic meaning. 
And Freud, like I mentioned before, that's why with your writing, you don't have to focus too much on this Electra or Opetivist uh, content because Freud kind of was a dirty old man in a way. He thought a lot about sexual behavior and sexual tendencies. So that's why a lot of people discredit his beliefs, his theories of dream and the unconscious mind. The latent content is just really symbolic meaning. Maybe there's something happens within our dream that we can relate to and understand as maybe foreshadowing, or maybe a symbolic meaning that makes sense to us moving forward. <clears throat> so manifest content, dream storyline, latent content, the symbolic meaning. All right, so what we dream, negative emotional content, failure dreams, and there's also sexual dreams. Kind of category, categorize them into those three forms of dreams. Eight out of 10 dreams have negative emotional content, which I think is interesting. And we really only have been studying this through the 1800s, 1900s. And what happened through then? Industrialization, right? And where people were working long hours in these industries, these factories. And um, we all know with, with the, the day ahead of us, what type of objectives we need to accomplish. So that might have an effect on the way we dream and our unconscious mind. Before that, maybe our plate wasn't so full. Maybe we didn't have these emotional uh, issues, this anxiety we might have through our daily schedule because we didn't really face a lot of the impacts of uh, society, what like we know as this fast pace of life. All right, I'm gonna sign that for you guys. It's really just these sleep disorders. I know I didn't get to it, I apologize, but you guys can read about it and complete that 